Um, yeah, we're, we're on to our second um, outside non-counting um, opportunity uh, in the preseason. Um, I think that uh, we learned a lot uh, from our first opportunity with, uh, with Butler and uh, that was two weeks ago. We've had ample time to, uh, to make some um, adjustments and, and improve in some areas that we needed to, to improve in. Uh, get a great opportunity uh, to uh, go against a very, very good basketball team, a very old team, uh, a team in the SEC, uh, a team that I know uh, their head coach very well. He's, he's been a, a friend for a long time. And Chris Beard, uh, you know, past, have crossed uh, over the course of time, uh, you know, from the, the junior college ranks. We're just a couple of junior college coaches that uh, – uh, cut our teeth in, in the Kansas Jukes. So uh, Chris has done an incredible job there. They've got a, a great roster, a great, great, great player in, in Matthew Morrell and uh, uh, the Breakfield kid. Uh, they're going to play extremely hard. They're going to be a, a very, very aggressive team. We're taking our team on the road, which I'm excited about. It'll be the first time that a lot of these young guys uh, get to experience a, a road trip and then Obviously, and not in not in front of our fans, but uh, uh, hostile fans. So, uh, be a great opportunity. It's to help Casa uh, of, of that region in, in Mississippi, a great cause, and, and uh, excited to be a part of that, helping uh, helping Chris and, and Ole Miss basketball uh, raise some money for for children in, in, in that region of uh, the state of Mississippi. So. Uh, We'll be better for it when we when we get done playing it. We'll, we'll learn a lot. We play uh, a lot of other SEC schools, so uh, they're coming up quickly. Uh, as the season's nine, ten days away, but uh, great opportunity. And then one final learning experience for these guys uh, as we get ready to head into uh, when the games do count. What did you or what did you set out the most from the scrimmage department? Yeah, you know, I thought they're good. Um, you know, I thought that, that Butler was a team that uh, was very, very old. They're very physical. Uh, they had some guys that, that we were familiar with, like Pierre Brooks and, uh, and Patrick McCaffrey, uh, guys that uh, uh, were physical, experienced. I thought we, we did some good things in those areas, uh, being able to uh, be challenged like that. I think that uh, obviously Dad's a guy who's been to a couple Final Fours and, and they're extremely well coached. Uh, we didn't scout at, at all for that game. So, um, you know, I thought principle wise, we did some really solid things. I thought there were some mistakes we made. They threw a few actions at us that we had to, uh, you know, we've had to work on and clean up that, uh, that we had. And so, uh, you know, that personnel wise, you know, I thought. Uh, uh, we had some positive things from, from all of our newcomers, and uh, that's what you look for in a game like that. Do you go in with a plan on how you want to distribute minutes for an exhibition, or do you let the game flow? Yeah, the game will flow. Um, you know, I think that, that we're obviously still looking at uh, situations, lineups, um, what that may entail. Obviously, it's a game on television. Uh, so you can play two 20-minute halves. It'd be more game-like feel um, in, in terms of, of, of you know if guys get in foul trouble, if guys get in um, you know you get the bonus early. You know with those those types of situations you didn't pay much attention to in a uh, in, in a scrimmage. So uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll look at some different things and 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 obviously keep our interest. Uh, at the forefront, but uh, we're going to see a style, we're going to see a system, we're going to see something that uh, they're well ingrained in and, and, and they've done for a while as they're an old team and it'll be interesting to see how we handle that. Talked a lot about defense going into that scrimmage. What do you think of your team defensively coming out of that? Uh, some good, some bad. I think that um, uh, that's to be expected. This time of year, I thought that uh, that we competed. I, I, I love some of the things that uh, you know our guys did on the ball. I thought that uh, uh, you know they're a very very heavy uh, ball screen team. Um, I thought they ran some actions that really hurt us that we just didn't cover. Um, and, and scouting will clean some of that up. Uh, we're not going to go into a real in depth scout 
uh, at all with with Ole Miss. Uh, it's more going to be personnel based, and and so our guys start to dive into some of that part of of, of, of a scout. But uh, uh, some good, some bad, and and uh, you know we've got to got to continue to do the, the tough things, and uh, that will definitely be challenged on Sunday. With Tommy not available for the scrimmage against Butler, what did that look like at the five in terms of how you were able to? Man, that position. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, you know, you get a little bit smaller at times. Um, you know, we slid uh, we slid Ben there uh, a, a decent amount. We we played carry there a little bit. Uh, uh, Merez obviously uh, is going to man that spot and played uh, a decent amount. So uh, we just kind of rotated guys in and out. It was it was. Um, you know, like I said, there was some good, there's some bad. You know, I think that uh, uh, those will be things that we'll have uh, throughout the course of the season to look at. Uh, you know, we can be a really, really good uh, shooting team, um, you know, with, with, with Kerry, with, with Ben. Um, you know, we, we did some good things with, um, uh, with those lineups. So, we'll, we'll, again, we'll see how those look on Sunday. Is Tommy's status the same for this game? Tommy is, um, Tommy will play. Um, Sunday, we don't have a uh, uh, an official status uh, yet, um, but is cleared for the scrimmage. That will be determined later. Uh, but we did get notification that uh, that he can play in the scrimmage, which will be uh, a positive thing for him as he needs to get his uh, obviously get his feet wet against some other competition. Does that strike you as a step forward or one off thing, or how do you read that from, from what you did? I I don't. Um, you know, I think it's just that it's a process that goes on and, um, you know, our compliance people have done a fabulous job in our administration and, and uh, uh, you know, they, they said he could play in a, in a, um, in the game on Sunday and we'll, you know, it's, it's nice. I'm really happy for him because he was, he was itching to want to play uh, against Butler and obviously we can. So I'm, I'm happy for Tommy that he gets to play on Sunday. You mentioned you may see some good things from the newcomers and I'm just and the freshman look in the in Yeah, the you know, I think that um, uh, they did some really good things. I think that uh, um, we had not been to State Farm Center for even a practice uh, prior to that. We walked into that thing cold. Um, so we didn't shoot the ball particularly well in our in our freshman uh, uh, you know, first time in there. I mean, it's, for a lot of them, it's the first time they've seen the court down. So, um, you know, there was some adjustment getting used to that. And, and uh, but I thought defensively, uh, a lot of good things uh, from those guys, which is, is usually the biggest challenge. And then offensively, you, you kind of take it for what it is. Um, you know, some nights the ball doesn't go in. We didn't, none of those guys shot it great, uh, but they did a lot of really good things. What impact, if any, can football have on you guys? Just their success and fan excitement standpoint, and maybe fans getting locked in several months before basketball season. Nothing better. There's nothing better. I I say it many times that winning is the most contagious drug and feeling of all time, and uh, it, it, it it uplifts the community, it uplifts the campus. Um, you you've got um, you know just an, coming off an incredible weekend uh, here with the celebration, with the win. Uh, they're ranked, they're playing a number one team. Uh, we'll fly to Oxford and we'll be sitting in a room with our, with our guys uh, watching that game on, on, on television. They've got a home game there, so we're actually going to go in pretty early to try to avoid as much traffic and, and uh, difficulties from that. But we'll be right there cheering for them. They all know each other. They're great friends. And uh, Again, it's it's it, winning is so contagious and it's so fun to be around and, and uh, uh, extremely happy for them and uh, got a great opportunity this weekend uh, against number one. It seems like everyone, that's, you see scouts or any the draft people who come through here, they leave raving about KJ. So, like, what is wild you about him to this point? Yeah, I think he's got a maturity about him. I think he's he, he's. And, and I say that his maturity is in his, his basketball IQ. It's beyond his years. Um, obviously, there's great size. Uh, there's, you know, there's a 6'5", 6'6", 205, 210-pound guard that doesn't look like he just turned 18. 
Uh, but his, you know, I think the impressive thing is he's a great, great competitor. Uh, he, he works extremely hard. Um, and then he is, uh, he takes what the game gives him. It does, it's not a matter of whether he scores 30, which, you know, you can go to his U18 stuff, he could do, or if he's piloting up the assist. He just takes uh, a mature route uh, to affecting the game. I have a lot of appreciation for that. Often this time of year, the best lineup defensively is not the best lineup offensively. Is that something you're looking through right now? Um, I'm, I'm, lo I'm looking for the next Terrence on the defensive side. I'm looking for the guy who can um, put the clamps on somebody. I'm looking for that guy, if the, that heater's coming, that we have a chance to uh, – uh, Shut him out. And who's that? Who's that guy going to be? Um, offensively, we got a lot of a lot of opportunities, a lot of options. We we can do a lot of different things. I feel uh, you know our guys are, are in a good place there. Who takes that next step for us on the defensive side? Uh, we'll see. Who have you seen showing signs of maybe could step into that role to this point? Nobody yet. Nobody. Is that developing a want to in their yeah, lives? Yeah, and I think it's. I think it's. Um, I think those things <laughs> happen when you see somebody else. I think it's hard in practice to 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 generate that. You know, there were days back when Trent and Andres and and I O were here that you know it was it was it was challenging. Like who who can stop who? They were all pretty gifted offensively, did different things until you start to see a different uh, jersey. Um, you know, and that, that true competitive grit steps in and that fire in your belly and that, you know, I'm going to stop you. Uh, sometimes you have to see a different jersey to truly get that. If you were to do an exhibition game, did you want it to be on the road? Was that really yeah, that was very much, uh, you know, Chris and I go way back and, and, and we talked and, you know, it's one of those that kind of started out as a closed door and then, you know, he's like, you know, we've got a great cause here that I'd like to help and be involved with and, and how about an exhibition and, and uh, you know, it just made sense for us to, um, you know, we had the Butler situation and, and opportunity here, uh, we had that done before um, and just to, to go on the road, um, I always liked that experience and, um, you know, then it turned into uh, you know, the exhibition and, and in front of fans and next thing you know, TV's picking it up. Uh, so it just checks a lot of boxes that, that I'm excited about. And, you know, we were very uh, diligent trying to find teams that are old, teams that are veteran. Uh, that was very, uh, very big part of us with, with the scrimmages and, 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 and the preseason here. You mentioned all the options offensively. How do you feel about the, the synergy you guys have or just establishing an identity within all those options. Yeah, that's still coming. I like it. I, I like these guys. I like we play unselfish. We've been, we've been playing the right way. Our assisted turnover rates every single day are good. Our, our flow's being better. I think we're still learning, um, you know, when, when, when guys get it going, to keep finding that guy and, and play to a, to a hot guy every now and then. Um, so I think we're, um, uh, we're doing a lot of positive things on that on, on on that side of things, from the synergy to the connectivity, and we're still trying to figure out, you know, what lineups work best together and what don't. A lot of size on the roster. Is that translated into rebounding? Have you, have you been a good rebounding team? So? We have been an average rebounding team at this point. Um, uh, one of my big challenges is getting our guards to rebound. Uh, our guards have to rebound the basketball. When, when our guards rebound the basketball, we run. And, and we're very, very good at that. And, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, Kylan Boswell's been uh, very, very good. But Trey, uh, KJ, Will, all of those guys, uh, I'm going right on Draven. Uh, Draven's rebounding extremely well on the offensive end. He's, he, we've got to get better better rebounding from him on the defensive side. So all those things are, are um, just part of it. And, uh, you know, we, we sure don't want to say, well, we're big, so we're going to get every rebound. That's not the case. Do, do you think your guys are any motivation from being unranked and all going in? 
preseason. No one's played a game. Nobody even knows r rosters. I mean, you can, you know, uh, probably not. We're, we know we've got a we've got a whole bunch of opportunities coming. Um, you know, to prove ourselves in in, in, the, in the rankings, but uh, uh, I wouldn't rank us either. I mean, we've got two guys back, so it is what it is. I guess in, in watching this like mini series, you guys have just listening to the way that you guys have talked this off season. It feels like there's a lot of confidence coming from you guys as a program. I'm just can you give any context to how that relates to maybe where you've been previously? That want us to have confidence. I think we're good. I don't know if we're great, but I think we're good. And, and you know, I, th I think we're at a point now in this program where there's standards. And uh, it, it's, yeah, we've got goals we want to try to reach. But I think, we, I, think, I think the expectation starts with me. And, uh, you know, I tell everybody else, if, if, if you need somebody to follow, get in line. And uh, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of expectations. I'm not afraid of the pressure. Um, you know, we're, we're going to sprint towards that. And, um, you know, we've got uh, a, a standard of doing things here that's been pretty doggone high. And um, we're not satisfied with that. But I want our guys to feel that air and feel that confidence and not be, not be afraid. There's going to be some doubt. I get it. Just get in line. We'll go, we'll, we'll go try to knock down the doors together. And, and uh, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to go on the road and see how guys react. And, but, you know, we've done it before. And, and again, those are the standards that we have here at uh, Illinois Men's Basketball. And, and, and this group's been, uh, they're, they're confident. They're confident in their abilities. But I don't know what uh, what that translates to and when we get smacked and are we going to jump back up. You say some doubt. Do you mean like people, how they look at you or just the doubt of not having done it before? Like with this Anything group? you want to make it. Anything you want to make it. Everybody will always, there'll be some doubt about something. And I just, that's life. You know, that's life. Let's, let's go figure out how to knock down the door and know that we're going to be, we're going to try to be really good at what we do. And we're going to do it with, a, uh, with, with a, the backpack on that we've got hard work and, and, and we're not afraid of that. And uh, I want our guys to believe in that and have confidence that, that, that all that hard work's paying off. Well, Riley, highly ranked, obviously, highly regarded coming out of high school. How's he made the adjustment to, Great. to the next level? Great. He gets better every single day. Uh, he's gained weight. Um, Fletch has done an unbelievable job with him in terms of monitoring his nutrition, making sure he's gaining weight, making sure what he does in the weight room. Um, it, it, it's it's translating to the basketball court. He has been phenomenal um, in terms of just his work ethic and his attitude to get better every day. And, and uh, we need a good Will Riley, and he's, he's we're starting to see that uh, consistency build every day. All right after Tony Bennett retired, there's a lot of dialogue about the state of college basketball and how that impacts coaches. Where do you stand on that, and, and why do you think you've been able to thrive in this new environment? You know, I think everybody's different, and and I, I I I totally understand where Tony's at and where he's been, and, and just I have not talked to Tony. Um, I think there's uh, uh, there's challenges. I think we're in a unique time when we don't have rules, we don't have we don't have any guidelines. Um, we're in between. A, uh, potential revenue sharing that will happen in April to NIL and what that looks like and, and uh, you throw in the transfer portal which is, is to me is one of the great challenges we don't know from year to year whether we have one guy back or eight guys back um, we're dealing in a calendar that is very different um, for the high majors we're seeing different separation from from level to level um, We've had guys every year in the, in the draft, and we don't know our roster until, until June. So I think there's so many things out there. I think we've got brilliant leadership. I think Tony is doing an incredible job um, at, of carving a new path uh, for, for all of college sports and what that will look like. Um, I think there's uh, an attitude of just we've got to, I'm kind of going with the flow 
but my mentality is always to be the very, very best of what we do. And so if change is the, is the norm now, let me figure out how to change and let me figure out how to do it with a, with a lot of help, a lot of guidance, Josh Whitman, all of our staff, uh, let, let's figure out how to do it uh, the best we can do it. And, and um, we have unbelievable transparency in our department. So Josh gives us a, a, a guideline and a parameter that, that we, we have to work with and then we're just attacking it. And I've never been afraid to make changes on the court. And I've tried to adapt, like it or not, without complaining, and just be as creative as we can and as, and as, as, as keep climbing the mountain until we get to the top. Let's be the best at it if we're gonna do it. And what, whatever that looks like, and if that makes no sense, it, it must make no sense, because we don't, we don't have guidelines, we don't have rules, but we, we know we're, we're doing a lot of things the best we can, and that's attacking the portal, that's uh, you know recruiting high school kids, we're trying to be as upfront as we can with, and as aggressive as we can in the fall. Along those lines, do you, do you know how many scholarships you're recruiting towards no. at this point? Recruiting's very different this year than it is, than it was last year. Um, Last year we were old. We knew we had spots open. And so, you know, kids today, agents, all those people, they want to come be a part of that. Uh, when you've got a young roster, we've got one senior. Um, everybody throws up the question, where do I fit? Who's leaving? Um, so you, the, the recruiting piece is, is very different. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like in the future, um, and and so it's a it's a very different model than it was last year. So uh, we don't have a national letter signing date anymore. You know, it's 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 completely di completely different to us. So um, you know, it'll be it'll be a very active spring, as I think uh, it will be for almost everybody. Uh, we'll look and see what that looks like. We'll look and see what the settlement looks like. Um, just a lot of questions at this point. Is it still 13? Is it still counting on 13? Or is it go up? No, I think, I think the one thing that I, I think we're moving towards is, is, a, is not scholarships, but, but roster spots um, and, and how, those, how those look. I think that the, the administration will dictate as, as kind of what those look like and, and how that looks what, looks like could be I think I think Big Ten's decided on 15 I think in college basketball for, for us uh, you know there's no scholarship breakdown potentially you, can, you just have 15 on your roster so I think we're in a kind of wait and see mode how it all plays out and that's a lot of guys that's but you need that many to practice it's a lot of guys to keep happy if you're trying to play them all so uh, we'll see how all that uh, continues to, to work. Okay, thank you.